So the first thing you want to do is you want to be standing unshod or in bare feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to turn so that you can see yourself in a mirror. A closet mirror is great at home from the side. If I had a plumb line and I dropped it from your hip, the straight line comes up so it's really over the mid foot, which means that her leg is at an angle. So that, this is your pelvis right here. These are your feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have you back up until your hips come back, until your leg is vertical. Now go back to where you were. I would wager that whether you're running, whether you're standing at your workstation, when you're standing around talking to me and doing interviews on camera, that your typical alignment is with your hips out in front. So you're always just gonna back your hips up. That's like a really simple cue you can remind yourself. As soon as you back up, you end up using more glutes and more hamstrings. The key is not always playing with your running time but the amount of time that you're using your body when you're not running, which is way more time. So if you want stronger leg muscles to support you, you wanna adjust how you stand. So once your hips are back, you'll probably find that it's hard to stay there a little bit and reach your arms out in front. We wanna bring the rib cage down. If you see, I have my finger on the front of her ribs, so like the bottom, forward most, lowest part of the rib cage here. If I drop the plumb line, you would see that her ribs sit in front of her pelvis. Again, really common runner adaptation because you're gonna use a lot of quad and psoas which are gonna come up and attach to the back here. And so the tighter you get through your hip flexors, the more it tends to pull the ribs forward. And if you see a lot of runners, like especially when they're straining towards those last few miles, the ribs really go forward. So I'm gonna have you drop your ribs. Once we back the hips up and we drop the ribs, a lot of people will find kind of the culprit, which is a lot of tension up here in the shoulders. So what I want you to do, just go back to your normal stance. All right, so do you see, go back, hips back and ribs down. One of the reasons we end up going hips forward and ribs up is to deal with how much hyperkyphosis or too much curve we have at this part. So go ahead and stand up to your normal stance. We have all heard pull your shoulders back, right? Has anyone ever told you to, like, to fix your posture by pulling your shoulders mm -hmm. back? But what happens when we pull our shoulders back is we end up just displacing forward everything underneath. And so I'm going to teach you another way to straighten this out a little bit, okay? You have to get your head up. Your head can't be so far out in front of you. So put your hand on your chest and that's gonna help you anchor it. And then you're going to what I call ramp your head up, which means you're gonna slide your head back because your ears should be back over your shoulders. All right, I'm gonna grab you by the ponytail okay. and I'm gonna like pull, like it's this length here. We want a distance to increase between the nape of like the bottom of your hairline and C7, which is a boniest part of your um, vertebrae, if you, the big bump here. I'm pulling this up because I want you to like make that longer. And then we go forward, watch this distance. You see how that gets smaller when she yeah. goes forward? And then come back up. You didn't think I'd show up here and just pull your hair. <laughs> right, go wait, go longer, chin down, chin down, chin down. Make a double chin, make a triple chin, bonus points, quadruple chin. So that's the motion. All right, you can take a break because it's not easy. <laughs> I know. So when you combine a lot of running with a lot of computer, which is what a lot of people do, then you end up kind of with this forward displacement. And the more forward displacement you have, the more you have to push your hips forward and lift your ribs to correct it. A lot of running injuries, I would say, probably come more from how their bodies have adjusted to everyday life, more so than only the running. It's the context, mm -hmm. it's the context of it all.